Good evening, and welcome to this candidate forum for the Campbell City Council. This webinar is being sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Southwest Santa Clara Valley, which covers the cities of Campbell, Los Gatos, Montesarino, and Saratoga. The League of Women Voters is a national organization, organization that provides nonpartisan voter services and does not endorse or oppose any political party or candidate. But we do advocate when we have studied an issue, such as education, and have developed a position on it. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available through our local league's website and other social media sites. My name is Eleanor Yick, current president of the Southwest Santa Clara Valley League and the moderator for tonight's forum. I am pleased to welcome and introduce the candidates for two district elections. Candidates for District 1, please put your video on now. Thank you, and welcome to candidate Susan Landry, Terry Hines, and Ann Souza. And now I'd like to introduce the candidates for District 2. Candidate District 2, would you please put on your video? Thank you, and I would like to introduce candidate Carol Hoffman and candidate Sergio Lopez. For the first time, Campbell is electing candidates by district. What this means in this election is only the Campbell registered voters who live in District 1 will vote and elect one of the candidates to serve as their council member. Only the Campbell registered voters who live in District 2 will vote and elect one of the candidates to serve as their council member. Registered voters who live in other districts in Campbell, such as three, four, and five, will not be voting on any of these candidates, and in fact, they won't even appear on your ballot. We will try during this webinar to keep the candidates from each district next to each other, but sometimes the technology overrides us. But you, the audience, can always see which district candidate is speaking by observing their background screen. The candidates will make their opening statements by district. After the opening statements, the candidates will respond to questions in a randomized order as one group rather than by area. Candidates, we so appreciate your willingness to participate in this virtual forum tonight. Before we begin, I would like to highlight some ground rules the candidates have agreed to observe during this forum. The League supports the accepted norms of civil discourse, mm -hmm. and in that light, the candidates have agreed to follow those norms that were outlined in a document they received. For example, candidates have agreed not to interrupt each other and to follow the allotted time responses. Candidates are reminded that they don't have to use the full time allotment, but are requested not to exceed the allotted time. This forum is scheduled to last approximately one hour. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to introduce her or himself by answering this question in their opening statement. What qualifies you to be the city council member for district one or for district two? Our timer for tonight's forum is league member Tom Pickrow. He will give each candidate reminders as they answer questions about the time remaining and when time has elapsed. For example, he mm -hmm. will show 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and then a stop sign. Candidates have been requested to end their sentence once the stop sign is displayed. After these opening statements, candidates will have 60 seconds to answer subsequent questions, which again have been submitted through the registration process or developed by league members. The moderator will announce and enforce the time limits for each question. And lastly, the forum will close with the candidates speaking in reverse order by district answering this question. What question do you wish you had been asked tonight and why? Candidates will have 90 seconds to respond. And now let's officially begin our forum. We will begin with each candidate's opening statement by district responding to the question. What qualifies you to be the Campbell City member for 
District 1. Candidates will have 90 seconds to respond. <clears throat> we will begin in alphabetical order with the opening statement from Terry Hines. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, League of Women Voters. You are for this forum, very much appreciated. And you also brought clear skies and breathable air, so thank you. <laughs> I commend all the candidates on the desire to serve and give back to our shared community. I honor your desire for public service. I'm Terry Hines running for Campbell City Council District 1. As a longtime homeowner in Campbell Village, I feel a deep sense of community and all it has to offer. I want to continue to give back by being your representative on City Council. I served on, planning, on the Planning Commission where I worked in collaboration with my colleagues, the business community, and my neighbors to define the current and future look, look of the city. My wife, Mary, and I have been married for 40 years, have two children and two grandchildren. Over and over for 14 years, I have been a local small business owner, helping small businesses prosper with new cloud-based technology. I'll use my experience to focus on city um, building a better candle. This will include support for business development projects that improve and blend with the city, I work in restaurants and retail to recover from the COVID-19, and I'll work with community on responsible building for new housing. Finally, I'll work with our police and neighbors on continuing to improve our approach to public safety. I'd be honored to have your vote, Terry Hines, Campbell City Council, District 1. Thank you very much. And now we'll hear from our second candidate from District 1, Susan Landry. Susan, we can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, hi, um, I'm Susan Landry and I am the current mayor in Campbell. I got elected to the Campbell City Council in 2016. Uh, we rotate mayor and so I have one year of being mayor. I am qualified to be on council for the next term. Not only am I currently on council and being very uh, productive and saving Campbell's small town feel, but I have 45 years of experience as a small local Campbell business, as a landscape architect, and my whole business model is around uh, working on public sector projects. Uh, I have worked for the city of San Jose as an employee, Santa Clara University as an employee, and I've worked for almost every government agency in the county. Um, my type of work I focus on is providing projects that provide a public benefit and that manage our resources wise and equitably. I have designed parks, playgrounds, creeks, trails. I've even worked on uh, several homeless shelters. I've been active in the community prior to being on council and I continue um, to be engaged in the process. I have the expertise it takes to achieve the goals that we need to get keep Campbell moving forward and preserve us as the darling of Silicon Valley. Thank you. Thank you. And our third candidate for District 1, Ann Souza. Hello, I'm Ann Souza and I live in the Campbell Village neighborhood. It was annexed into Campbell seven years ago. Soon after it was annexed, I became a member of the Neighborhood Association Board in charge of social media and communication. I just finished a five-year term on the Civic Improvement Commission where we advise the City Council in matters of library, beautification, social service grants, street naming, youth and senior services. Um, I introduced two new work items on the Civic Improvement Commission. One was um, working with the Youth Commission and hosting four successful job fairs where over 150 youth came every year um, and partnered up with Campbell businesses. I started a campaign called Campbell Cares a few years ago to bring about mental health awareness and suicide prevention. I was appointed by County Supervisor Susan Ellenberg to the first five commission of Santa Clara County in 2019. I'm the community VP of the Junior League of San Jose, whose focus area is changing the outcomes of transitional age foster youth. I'm a member of the West Valley Rotary Community Corps and, um, and Campbell CERT. I have a background in education and I've taught in places like East Los Angeles and Burbank. I've managed a small business for 21 years, California Sports Center, and because of the number of youth I've hired, I was asked to be on the Campbell Union High School Work Experience Board. I have been very instrumental during this pandemic, 
keeping my small business open, and I plan to do the same for Campbell businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much, candidates for District 1. And now we will move on to our two candidates who are running in District 2. And we will begin our opening statements with Carol Hoffman. Thank you, and thank you League of Women Voters for this forum today. I'm Carol Hoffman, and I'm running for Campbell City Council District 2. I've been a resident for 35 years, volunteering here and having an impact. I have a real sense of community. I raised my family here. I started volunteering with the schools they went to, and volunteering is really my passion. As they grew up, it brought me to finding Leadership Campbell, which brought me the information around the infrastructure of Campbell, as well as the surrounding cities and, and some relationships that I continue with today. That led me to the Civic Improvement Commission, the Campbell Rotary, and Campbell Police Foundation, where I continue to serve as a leader and making a broad impact. I've been a Civic Improvement Commissioner for the past six years, and I'm currently the chair. This has gotten me city government and broad community experience for the projects that's, that we've worked on. The Rotary projects that are being done are in conjunction with the city, chamber, and local groups. We support schools, Rosemary and Monroe, as well as the community toy program and park cleanups, and so many, many, many more. In 2018, I was honored to be Campbell Citizen of the Year for my impact as a leader and volunteer. Campbell is the gem of Silicon Valley, and I will work to maintain the small town feeling that we enjoy. I will do that with the relationships I've built in Campbell and with surrounding leaders and agencies. With budget and planning challenges in the next few years, I'll bring my 30 years of program management experience in business, technology, and finance to address these challenges. I will move the city in the right direction for the future. After 35 years of living here, volunteering, and having an impact on the community, I'm qualified and ready to get things done as your District 2 City Council member. I'd be honored to have your vote. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will move on to uh, Sergio Lopez for District 2. When I was growing up here, I never thought I'd be sitting here today speaking with you. I grew up here in the community. My parents are working class and immigrants. And I went to Kimball Public Schools where I had incredible public school teachers who really made a difference for me. And when I was growing up, my family opened up a small business uh, to start to save way for a college fund so that I could be the first in my family to graduate. And we had that going for a couple of years, but went through a, a very difficult and painful experience when we lost a small business during the Great Recession. And then our house was foreclosed on the, the house I'd, I'd grown up in. And that led me to the realization that you've got to get involved, you've got to have a voice. So I've worked on public policy ever since at the local, state, and up to the national level, but with a focus on local issues, serving on local boards. Uh, and along the way, I was fortunate enough to be accepted on a full scholarship to go to Yale University, thanks to those incredible teachers. And when I graduated, I could have done what a lot of my friends and classmates did and uh, moved across the country, taking a six-figure job. But that was never an option for me because I knew that this was a community that had given me so much opportunity and it was my responsibility to do my part to make it better. So that's why I'm running today because the same issues that first got me involved are the issues I see facing Campbell now. We've got a housing crisis and people are worried about staying in their homes. Our small businesses are scared that they're not gonna survive another few weeks. I'm running because it's time to get to work and I look forward to engaging with you on the issues. Thank you so much. Thank you and thank you candidates. We will now move on to questions that have been submitted through the registration process or developed by league members. The candidates will each have 60 seconds to respond to each question. The candidates will respond to these questions in a randomized order so that everyone has the opportunity to go first or last, whatever the case may be. So to begin with our first question, let me just read this out. If elected, you would be the first, if elected, what would be your first issue you would want to have on the agenda? And what is your long range vision for the city of Campbell? And we will begin with Anne Souza. Okay, well, the first issue is getting through um, the closure of these small businesses or, or what they've been required to close. We really need to come up with a plan for the entire city um, in all of the districts. And what can we do to help these small businesses 
because we need to have businesses operating in order for us to have revenue to run the city. So we can't work on things in the city without a good budget. So really helping the businesses throughout Campbell would definitely be the first thing that we need to, to tackle. Long range, long range plans, we really need to work on the budget um, and look to the future so that we're not going to be um, you know, un, in debt. We really need to make sure that we have the money to give the services to the Campbell residents that they expect and they deserve. So definitely the budget and helping the small businesses would be the first thing that I tackle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next candidate will be Carol Hoffman. Hi. Um, when, for, when I'm first elected, one of the first things to do is to make sure that I understand the priorities that the city has set and, work, and find the best way to work with the city council on moving those priorities ahead. We currently have COVID as a critical issue and that really impacts the budget. And with the budget impact, will we have more services or less services? We need to make sure that the most critical services that the city needs are continued. And then how do we move forward from there? And the other part is making sure that we have the right policies moving in place and for the future, setting things up so that we can be successful through um, policies for development, closing on the general plan, aligning new um, projects that may come in. I want to make sure that we cover all those. Thank you. Thank you. Our next candidate will be Susan Landry. And on mute. We can't hear you, Susan. Sorry, I keep putting it on mute to be quiet. Um, so currently the city council has three priorities that started in July 1 of this year and will continue through to June 30th. Those three priorities are long to term land use, comprehensive planning, providing open space and community engagement. And we're setting the groundwork right now in this year to follow and continue into next year. Our budget meeting that we just had on uh, last night talked about our $4.4 million deficit that we had on the last quarter. We're now um, trying to make sure we do not dip into our reserves anymore. We need to keep the budget balanced. We need to keep evaluating it. And that's very important. Also our general plan update, uh, our, we have a new category being proposed for high density hotel, commercial, residential, and that needs to be better defined. And time is of the essence because the state is going to start mandating uh, things we need to do. Thank you very much. Our next candidate, Sergio Lopez. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to save our small businesses. And coming from the background where I do, I know the pain of working day in and day out and doing all the right things, and then still falling behind through no fault of your own. Uh, and too many of our businesses today are in that situation. We need active, engaged leadership on those issues. Uh, so that's the first thing I would do. In the long term, we need a, a plan and a vision uh, to solve our housing crisis and keep Campbell a, a livable, family-oriented community because we need the next generation uh, of our, our, our children and their children to be able to keep afford uh, living here. Uh, so that's absolutely critical. Uh, there's a number of other issues. I'm a huge policy nerd, so that's why I've released the most comprehensive platform in Campbell's history with 36 white papers uh, available on my website, lopezforcampbell.com. Thank you very much. And now, Terry Hines. We've really got a problem with the COVID-19 and the impact on the small businesses. Uh, that's a, it's, a, it's been a disaster. It's going to continue to be a disaster. And it's, uh, it's killing small businesses. You walk downtown. And you can see all sorts of uh, empty businesses that were open in January. We need to build an environment of support for local small businesses. We have parklets planned for the downtown restaurants, giving traffic to retail. We need to push for assisting small businesses citywide. I've suggested, you know, there's all sorts of ideas and we've got to be able to bring those ideas together. I've suggested to Campbell staff, there could be a technology support program for uh, small businesses to recover. We've got premier technology companies right in our city boundaries, 8x8 and Barracuda with eBay and Netflix right across the street. Have them give Campbell retailers something to hang on to. And finally, in the end, we really need, we, we need to plan to reopen. So that's going to take a lot of 
effort to uh, get the right steps, the right timing for that based on what's allowed. And we'll, we will reopen and need to have planned steps for indoors, for farmers market and for street fairs. Terry Hines, Campbell City Council, District 1. Thank you. Our next question will begin with Carol Hoffman. And the question is, since this is Campbell's first election by district, what are your plans for improving the area of Campbell that you would represent? Thank you. With the new districting um, in Campbell, it's changed, the, changed things from an election perspective. And we have more time and availability to talk to and learn about the people in, in our district. With that, we're able to understand what those issues are. But as a reminder, we need to actually run the whole city. We have infrastructure that is not bounded by certain districts. And it's really important to make sure that we find a way to do that as a council, as the five of us, and learn from what we have in our districts and what we've learned. I put out a survey to find out, at least in District 2, what the priorities are. And the priorities are pretty clear around public safety, and that's what people care the most about. Thank you. Terry Hines? We have reached out as well to every District 1 constituent and received a great amount of feedback. We got a resident on Echo now that feels unsafe and walking around Campbell. Uh, we've got a resident on Emerson that feels commercial space is necessary for a solid tax base. We got a resident on Hollis that wants better solutions for homeless, and a resident on Hacienda that wants better building permitting. We have a great amount of diverse opinions and challenges in making council decisions for the city. That's, that's really going to challenge us in making those council decisions. I will bring my experience in dealing with many diverse challenges and opinions to build consensus on the best decisions for Campbell. I've served on the council of the planning commission doing just that. I've built and run a very successful small business working to build solutions. And I'm the best candidate to navigate through these challenges to build a better Campbell. We need to stand stronger together. Let's stand stronger together. Thank you, Terry. And next, Sergio Lopez. Hey, uh, I've talked to hundreds of district residents um, and uh, one thing that I hear over and over is that on Union Avenue, especially our senior community, there's a large, uh, uh, there, there's several uh, senior facilities there. Um, and they're worried about the traffic that speed by many of them from out of town that cut through. Uh, so we need to look at traffic calming studies to uh, improve safety there. Um, and then the other thing I, I really hope we'll get into uh, transportation issues because that's a huge passion of mine. But uh, the district is shaped by uh, two VTA light rail stations with uh, another one in close proximity. Um, and after we get through the general plan update, one of the next phases is to look at a plan for that corridor. Um, and uh, the proposals that I put out are in line with what the, the uh, GPAC has, has stated of maximizing mixed use and residential to make use of transit and cut down on traffic in those areas. So those would be uh, major priorities for me. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and next we'll hear from Susan Landry. Okay, thank you. Um, the, one of the biggest issues that we have in District 1 is traffic. Uh, Kurtner Avenue is a major on-ramp to the freeway. There's a lot of cut through streets like a Central Park. Uh, we have problems on White Oaks. We have problems on Shamrock. And there are mechanisms for traffic calming and measures uh, that I have experienced working in as a landscape architect working on streetscape projects. We can do things like complete streets, which adds bike lanes. Um, the other thing is the businesses on Camden, a lot of them are sitting empty. A couple have even been torn down because they became so derelict and homeless were living in them. Since our budget, three things that create our budget is the tax base we get from property tax and sales tax. So the more we can get these businesses brought in and keep our business district on Camden and Union and Bascom viable, the better the city will be. Thank you. And now, Anne, Susa. Thank you. When I canvassed neighborhoods two years ago running, the number one um, issue for residents was speeding traffic and pedestrian safety. And I, I, a year ago, there were two pedestrian fatalities within a week off of Union Avenue. 
pedestrian and bicycle safety is is very important and there are so many streets in district one that need looked at kirtner union avenue white oaks white oaks is a lot of speeding traffic on there hacienda virginia sunny oaks a lot of cut through traffic also so my district i really want to work on pedestrian and bicycle safety and i've met with the director of public works to see how we can do that and we did do something in our neighborhood a few years back and we did get a traffic circle put in and that has helped tremendously so i am for traffic circles and helping divert traffic and that would be my number one uh, priority for our district to help thank you we're going to move on to question three and we'll start with sergio lopez what is your position on the state's continued attempt to take away local control of zoning laws? For example, what was proposed in SB 50? We need to make sure that Campbell remains a livable community, but I've come out in strong support of the revised version of SB 50 that uh, came up after feedback from local governments who had issues with the first version. Uh, and uh, like I said before, we're a family oriented community. And if we want to remain that way, uh, we have a choice between, uh, you know, only tech workers who are well off being able to live here or uh, allowing this to remain a family oriented community. And that's going to mean addressing our housing crisis and, and solving for the next generation and, and people uh, uh, of all kinds to be able to live here. So that's a major priority. And the revised version in my careful analysis of it uh, allows for uh, local input and control. Um, it would not have raised height limits uh, downtown, unlike the original version of the bill, and it would maximize uh, uh, housing a, a, a around uh, transit, which is in line with uh, what the GPAC has recommended. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Ann Sousa. Um, I agree that about the revisions. Um, it does give control locally because it doesn't... Um, it gives you input. It doesn't raise the heights. And I believe that we need more housing around transit. So yes, we need local control. We need to be able to make decisions um, what goes around, but we also need more housing. The number one complaint is affordable housing and there's not enough housing around here. I want Campbell to have a say, but I also want housing built. Um, so with the revisions, I think we're gonna be okay with it. And let's get some more housing built for people to live here so that we don't have to drive from so far away. If we were working in Campbell, we should be able to live in Campbell. Thank you, Ann. Terry? So the, sorry, the, the, it was Terry that you were asking for. Okay. Yes. Uh, really, I think what, uh, I think what we really need to focus on is the general plan. So um, the, the state is going to continue to, um, put out programs together that will work to take away local control. We need to get on and get the general plan completed uh, that is uh, accepted by with a consensus by the city council and give staff guidance and direction. I, I think that's really how we're going to be able to manage our local services. City council needs to give the uh, priority and support to staff to complete the uh, general plan as quickly as possible. And I must give the priority for businesses and affordable housing, like my other co candidates are, are saying. Uh, the GP uh, uh, got to address the FAR. Uh, we have a FAR and parking challenges that block every project brought into the Planning Commission. Uh, we've got to uh, be able to do that uh, and be able to get smart growth in the right areas before the state takes away the local control. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Carol Hoffman. Okay, thank you. Um, so I believe as far as housing goes, it's really important to make sure we do keep local control. There are family neighborhoods that are single family homes and they need to, they, they should stay that way. No need to put up duplexes and fourplexes into those neighborhoods. There are places in the general plan that we can look at improving housing options and especially around the transit corridors down Campbell Avenue and over off of Hamilton Avenue, there are options of places to go where we can get more housing. So we want to be very cautious about keeping this. We want to keep the small town charm and with that, keep the old neighborhoods and establishments there and work around it as best we can to provide enough housing for the people that need it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Susan Landry. 
Thank you. So your question was about our position on where um, state is trying to take over local control. So the first thing is having a very good understanding of what those regulations are. And how it relates to us is the more our general plan can be specific and the more things that we can have in our general plan, understanding the requirements of the regulations. For instance, the state grants density bonuses for housing if you put in low to low to moderate income housing. But because of what the city has on maximum floor area ratio, the unit numbers can be lower, where if we change the way that FAR is allocated, we can get smaller units, for instance, like four or 500 square feet, have a higher uh, density, but provide more affordable housing. So I think the biggest takeaway is understand the regulations and know how to have implementable solutions. Thank you. Our next question will begin with you again, Susan Landry. And the question is, what are some solutions for managing homelessness in Campbell and providing associated services? Susan? Uh, yes, thank you. So we do have um, the state's house or room key program did take over 55 rooms at the Motel 6 to help start providing shelter for housing for homeless people. We do not have a homeless shelter. We do not have a way station of where a person can go, check in, get evaluated, and have services provided to them. Because of the way our budget is situated with the county, the county of Santa Clara actually provides the majority of our services. We get to benefit from those and we have a collaborative relationship with the county. So having a way station or a place that people can be directed to and then trying to build a shelter in conjunction with that place um, and providing supportive services. That's the most important thing is you can't just house a person. You have to understand where they are, where in the, how long they've been homeless and what their needs are, whether they regard both behavioral health, finances or emotional. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Sergio Lopez. Campbell's a small town and uh, our budget is uh, projected expenditures for this year are just around $56 million. So we need to be realistic uh, about what we need to do. And the way to tackle this issue is in partnership with the county, like Mayor Landry said. Um, and, and that's where my work will really be invaluable to hit the ground running because this is a major priority for me. I'm proud to have been endorsed by Supervisor Susan Ellenberg who represents our district. Um, and I've met with Board President Cindy Chavez uh, and with Jen Loving of Destination Home. Uh, and the county, along with Destination Home, is in charge of implementing uh, a new plan to end homelessness in the county. So I look forward to drawing on those relationships and my relationships with staff, uh, where I've already been having the, these discussions about implementation uh, to really get underway. Uh, in particular, Campbell is one of the cities in the county that has not made use uh, of Measure A funding, which was a $1 billion dollar bond passed uh, in 2016. Uh, that is sitting there, most of the money is still there for us to build affordable housing. So would absolutely be a, a priority for me. Thank you very much. Our next candidate, Ann Sousa. When I went canvassing um, this time around, homelessness was definitely the number one issue. Um, it is not only homeless, it is mental health, it is addiction. It, when I met with uh, the chief of police, the number one call is on homeless. And when I did my ride along last year, that's most of the calls were for um, looking at the homeless. We need to have wraparound services. We need to have supportive housing and we need to have mental health services. Without all of these wraparound services and a place to be, it's, it's not gonna work. And we have to work together. We have to work with the police department, with the county, with uh, money that is in measure A that is set aside for this. There's a lot of things that we can do to help the homeless problem. Then you also have the problem with people living in their cars. So we have a few churches um, in Campbell that have parking lots. Could we have more? Could we have more of that for safe nighttime parking for um, people living out of their cars? There are a lot of issues we can deal with and, and help in Campbell with this. Thank you. Terry Hines. 
The homeless issue, as uh, other candidates have said, has come up time and time again on our surveys. Uh, it's, a, it's a problem across the whole Bay Area, uh, and, and we need to be able to address it. Um, I really commend the uh, support that was given and the use of the, uh, of the hotel, right, that I drive by every, just about every day uh, that uh, has the uh, homeless uh, in there. So um, I, I really feel that we need to be able to focus on that. Now, the, the source of that, the funds for that is, is with the county. And uh, they, have, uh, they have a tremendous amount of funds that can be addressed to that. Uh, as, as our other candidates have said, our budget is, uh, is restricted and in a deficit. Uh, so we need, to, uh, we need to really focus on being able to get a partnership with the county to bring the resources in. And you, you do that by being able to communicate with them, collaborate with them, and be able to get, the, uh, get uh, funds put into and resources put into the area to address homeless, not just in Campbell, but uh, in the other nearby neighborhoods as well. Thank you. And Carol Hoffman. <clears throat> Thank you. So the homeless situation in Campbell was definitely exacerbated in the last few years when the homeless camps were um, torn down in San Jose and a lot of those folks moved over to a lot of them along the creek, which is near me. Homelessness it, for me is very personal. Our Rotary Club has been serving and I've been part of this at the uh, shelter in San Jose where we see what everybody's going through. These are real human beings that are going through tough times. Some of them have you know, mental health issues and addiction, but a lot of them are just newly homeless because of the economy. So it's really important to find the best ways to be able to provide services. We actually need much more help from the county. And I, I've heard that from others, but it's serious. The county has money to help us that we don't have. We don't have a big budget and we do need help from the county because that's where all the services are. I have a friend who was homeless and managed to get themselves into a home by working through the county services. So we need to coordinate with the county. Thank you. Our next question will begin with Carol Hoffman. And the question is, and some of you have alluded to this already, but perhaps you could add to what you said. If elected to the city council, what specific plans would you propose to the council to stimulate the local economy, particularly now as we attempt to emerge from the COVID-19. So again, we'll begin with Carol. Okay, so uh, the question to stimulate the economy. So uh, first thing is city council is we need to have um, trust and a relationship with the small businesses, which I have through the chamber and making sure that we understand what their critical needs are and finding the best way to meet those. And how do we disseminate information to help bring us through these difficult times and make sure that folks are hearing what they need to hear. We may need technology support and we, you know, we need to make sure we know what's going to benefit the people in Campbell. And with that, we may need some new policy. We will need some new policies. Uh, there may not be a lot of money unless we can get it from other sources but it's really important to be able to understand what the community needs, what the businesses need, and help support them through this. Thank you. Uh, next, Susan Landry. Thank you. So we are starting to work on some specific ideas to stimulate the economy. One was closing the street in downtown Campbell. We knew it was a risk and that it may not be totally successful, but we gave it a shot. And we found that retail didn't do well, but restaurants did, so we opened it back up. So I think what the outtake of that was is being flexible, being creative and thinking outside the box and being willing to take a risk on options and solutions. We have an economic development division within planning, and right now it's one person. Uh, we can certainly uh, look at what programs we could add to the economic development group to help stimulate the economy. We do have a budget deficit, so to add people or add programs, we are having to balance that against other departments. But stimulating our economy helps us because we get the sales tax, the hotel tax, and the parcel taxes. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Sergio Lopez. It starts with having leadership that's uh, in touch and will be an advocate for the small business community. 
Uh, and I'm proud I've been endorsed by dozens of local small businesses. I'm a proud member of the uh, Campbell Chamber of Commerce, so I'm ready to hit the ground running. Uh, and I'll, I'll give one example. With tremendous respect for the hard work of the current council uh, and of city staff, uh, I feel like there could have been more outreach prior to closing down the street uh, with small businesses because we had retailers who were warning beforehand uh, of what would happen and, and uh, retailers were the, the ones who were hurt. Um, and so I, I, while I commend staff for doing uh, weekly surveys uh, now, I, I think we could have addressed those problems head on uh, much earlier. I, and then uh, I've also, it's also gonna take partnership with our, our local, uh, with the county, with the state delegation. Um, and when I worked on policy at the state level, my work led to the creation of the governor's commission on the future of work. So those relationships will be absolutely essential uh, to make sure that Campbell's in, uh, in the right place. Thank you. Uh, next, Ann Sousa. We need to reach out to the businesses in Campbell and really find out what they need, their needs are, because um, we, need, we need their businesses to open. We, that's what's going to stimulate the economy. We need to get to have our voices together, um, working together so that we can work through the county and let us open up businesses. I know um, personal experience being a manager of a small business, what it's taking right now to keep the business going and how many people I've had to lay off. And um, it's just, we need to work with the businesses. What do they need? How can we help them? And not just downtown, but throughout Campbell, there's many businesses on Winchester and Bascom that we need to, to look to help. Encouraging new business and a variety of businesses to come to Campbell so we don't just have uh, restaurants or just have retail. We need a variety so that we can stimulate our economy. Um, and then, you know, Campbell COVID cases are low. What can we do to open up the businesses? Thank you. And Terry Hines? Well, the, the most immediate and quickest impact on uh, the recovery is going to be uh, assisting the small business. We've got longer term uh, impact with the uh, GPAC uh, and the uh, uh, developers, but the immediate term is to address the small businesses. I founded my small business 14 years ago with a dream and a passion. And I, I built it from bootstraps to a solid performing corporation with long-term clients and man, many industries, overcoming many obstacles and challenges. That's exactly what every small business owner has gone through in Campbell. And we need to be able to understand that. We need to be able to uh, address their issues I've got a deep understanding of what it would take to build and run a small business. The Campbell City Council needs to embrace these small businesses and give them support. That, that could, that's, uh, there's a whole number of ways. I talked about a couple already with the technology, but we can work in coordination with the chamber. I'm a member of the chamber uh, for education and mentoring forums, financial support, uh, working with financial institutions to give support and business development support are all key components of that. Thank you. This next question is going to be one of those short, raise your hand and keep your hand up for about five seconds. The teacher in me is coming out again. Um, so the question is, please raise your hand if you support or you are supportive of the California ballot Proposition 15 also known as the Schools and Community First ballot measure that the league supports and would create a split role property tax. Raise your hand if you're in support of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, our next question, and this is actually going to be the last question from the community before we move on to closing statements. I've heard some of you reference this already, but I'd like you to add on to your ideas. And it's come up a number of times that it's a prime uh, interest in the city of Campbell. What are your ideas, and actually I'm going to be, be starting with Terry Hines on this, what are your ideas for improving pedestrian safety in Campbell? For example, crosswalks around the library and city hall, such as at Grant and Harrison. So Terry. So we need to be able to get uh, the proper uh, street programs uh, that give the ability to indicate uh, the, uh, the pedestrian traffic. The, the street, the strips in the road with a sign on the side, uh, that just doesn't work. Uh, that doesn't slow anybody down because 95% of the time you're going by there and you, you figure that, you know, you're going to be able to get through. What, what we need to be able to do 
is the, the, the button to make him flash. Uh, that's that's the, the number one pedestrian crossing uh, traffic issue that we need to do. And then uh, we need to be able to get the bikes off the sidewalks. Uh, I, I'm a I'm a bicyclist, not a very good one, but uh, we need to be able to move around to get those uh, get those bicycle bicycle lanes, get them off the sidewalk so that pedestrians feel safer, but then also the bicyclists are safer. So, uh, and, and bicycle lanes are not just paints painted streets. Uh, we need to be able to have uh, more structure to bicycle lanes. Thank you. And now, uh, Carol Hoffman. <clears throat> Thank you. So, for more pedestrian safety. Uh, I've been here for 35 years and one of the things that was very, very tough to live with was trying to get from downtown to the prune yard. And over the past, I was there for the groundbreaking and that portal that, that ties them together is a great way to have pedestrian safety. We should look at ways to find key areas that may be influenced by having this type of a setup where you're able to walk through very safely you don't have to worry about anything else. And that way you're separated from the bikes as well. And we, we don't have very many of those yet. And I think we should consider those. I agree with having um, safer crosswalks, more crosswalks, and making sure that all of those are um, well lit with flags, any way that we can do it. Downtown uh, Willow Glen does that with flags in a lot of areas in San Jose. So we can leverage something like that but having safe places for bicycles, having more bike paths and shared, um, separated from the cars. Thank, thank you, you very much. <clears throat> Our next candidate, Susan Landry. Yes, thank you. Uh, you specifically mentioned Grant and Harrison by the library. Yes. As part, as part of Measure O, I mean, made sure that the, that intersection, both at Central um, Civic Center Drive, Harrison and Grant, all be included in the site planning effort for the police and library. There is a plan to reconfigure the intersection at Civic Center in Harrison because of the unfriendly pedestrian environment. The other thing is to work with planning. Right now, most of the sidewalks are what's called an attached sidewalk at the curb, where we really should be promoting parkway landscape strips to get the person away from traffic, away from the smog and the congestion. The other things to do are to visually narrow the street, like for instance, Kirtner Avenue. You can create these bulb outs at crosswalks. You can put in street trees. And by visually narrowing the street, cars tend to slow down. Uh, there also are, um, the way we stripe crosswalks is, is also uh, changes how people re interact with the crosswalks. Thank you. Our next candidate will be Sergio Lopez. There's a number of areas I, I'd focus on. I, I mentioned uh, particularly along Union Avenue, looking at traffic calming studies. And I'd look at other areas that are cut throughs for cars going through out of town. Uh, but one of the most dangerous things uh, is uh, the number of cars on the road. And so um, I've been an outspoken advocate for public transit and uh, particularly with the, the general plan moving forward uh, and that, that Hamilton light rail corridor uh, getting as many cars off the road as possible is one of the best things we can do for pedestrian safety. Um, there are also many areas, particularly on the Los Gatos Creek Trail, where there, there's dangerous blind uh, turns for if, if you're riding a bicycle, and, and that's bad for both uh, bicyclists and pedestrians. So addressing as many of those as possible by putting mirrors around corners. Um, and I've met with folks from the Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition for discussions on, on how to impl implement this. Um, and then lastly, making sure that we bring back essential services like our crossing guards. Uh, when schools start to open up, uh, these were, were cut by the city and we absolutely need to prioritize the safety of our children. Thank you. And our last candidate on this question, Ann Sousa. Pedestrian safety is definitely one of my top priorities. We need safe routes to school. We need crossing guards. We need crosswalks. I want to, um, somewhere we, some places we don't have sidewalks. So determining do we need a sidewalk and um, so that we can have safe routes to school. Uh, I agree with bulb outs, traffic circles, and I'd like to see more crosswalks. The problem, one of the problems in the Campbell Village area is there, when we annexed in a Campbell, one of the crosswalks got stayed in San Jose. So having to work with that city to make it so that we can 
um, actually have a stop there or a crosswalk there um, would be really important. I believe um, working with public works and the planning department in all neighborhoods, we need to have um, pedestrian safety. And this would be something that um, if our neighborhood associations would get together and you know say, okay, these areas we need to have looked at. Traffic studies, yes, but sometimes traffic studies don't always um, help us with it. We need people to voice their opinion and voice their frustration with it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I have another one of those raise your hand questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the question. Please raise your hand if you are supportive of Prop 16, which is on the California ballot, that the league supports and which would amend the state's constitution to allow the use of race, gender, color, ethnicity, and national origin in public education, public employment, and public contracting. Please raise your hand if you're supportive of it. Okay, thank you very much. All right, and now candidates, we will be moving on to actually the last question, but it's part of your closing statement. So the question that we would ask you tonight is, in your closing statement, please respond to the question. What question do you wish you had been asked tonight and why? You will have 90 seconds to respond to this question. And we will go in the reverse order from how we did the opening statement. So we will begin with Sergio Lopez. Eleanor, thank you so much. Thank you to the league and, and to all our viewers. Uh, this has really been a tremendous joy to be with you tonight. I wish we could have gone on for longer. Uh, but the question I wish you'd asked is one that's always on my mind when uh, I'm, I'm sitting in, in those council meetings in, in City Hall in the audience. Um, and, and that's uh, who is excluded from this space even before we start the meeting. Uh, City Hall should be a space that, and, and our local government should be for all of us. But unfortunately, that's not true. And, and we look around at that space, it's working moms, it's people uh, with families, uh, it, it's uh, people who, who are lower income who might not even know that there's an issue in their neighborhood that's going to affect them. So how do we start to make our government more accessible, more responsive, and more accountable? And that's something that I've been focused on throughout this campaign, leading by example. I'm running to be the most accessible council member our community's ever had. Uh, so please, I, I urge if you have any more questions, anything we didn't cover, um, you can text or call on my cell, cell phone, 408-660-0547 or email Sergio at LopezForCampbell.com. And my website with 36 comprehensive uh, platforms and, and studies uh, is LopezForCampbell.com. But thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our next candidate will be Carol Hoffman. Thank you. And thank you for this forum. Uh, it's been uh, very educational for me too. Um, one of the questions I wished had been asked is, what does Campbell look like in the future? in the 10, 20, 30 years from now? What does it look like? You know, I've been here for 35 years. I've watched it change and grow and turn into a wonderful community. So if we take a big picture look, which is really important to understand when you're on the city council, the decisions you make today, how do they affect decisions down the road? How do we keep this charm when we're in the midst of Silicon Valley? We do need more housing. We do need to manage the transportation. So maybe a better coordination with transportation agencies, less traffic, continue great public safety. How do we do this over that time? I wanna look at a stronger community, not just, you know, COVID is going to change things for a short time. We've already seen that in the past here. I was part of that. How do we move forward and keep some strength in the community and make sure that we're actually getting to where we need to go? How do we connect downtown to the prune yard? I think it's gonna look amazing. We're gonna get some great housing that's gonna connect them. We're gonna have themes. We're gonna get a Bascom mm -hmm. Avenue plan to set up the businesses there because right now we're, we're not building for the future and I think that's really important thing to do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. Next, Ann Souza. Um, the question, why am I running? Um, my life, business and experience have prepared me for uh, city council and to lead through difficult times. Um, I come ready to listen. I, I, work, I get the work done. Um, I will represent my district well. There are different areas of the district and I will look at all that, but I will also work as a whole for Campbell. 
we might be representing our district, but we need to look at the big picture of Campbell too. I want quality of life for all. Um, that theme is in my priorities for um, working on economic development so we can still provide services. I will advocate for safer streets and pedestrian and um, safety and bicycle friendly neighborhoods. I believe in creative solutions for affordable housing and managed growth that still keep the heritage of Campbell. And I will address the homeless problem and work with the county and state for sustainable solutions uh, for supportive housing and wraparound services. I've been endorsed by a lot of the Campbell commissioners because they know I get the work done. I am thoughtful, inclusive, and will be a strong advocate for working families and children. I'm good at building professional relationships. I have the mindset to collaborate and I, I, the tenacity to get things done. I will work hard for you. I will be the voice. If, you, if, um, if things are going wrong, I will be the voice. I will listen and then I will be your voice. So vote for Ann Souza in November. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ann. Our next candidate for District 1, Susan Landry. Thank you. So your question was, what question was not asked? And I think we should be addressing climate change. Uh, look at what's happening right now. Look at how our air quality has been because of the fires that are happening. Look at the hurricanes that are happening across the country. What can we do to improve our quality of life? Things like reducing greenhouse gases, carbon capture in our soils, and implementing the portion of the California Building Code called Cal Green. Right now it's a guideline, not a requirement. That requirement would be things like green roofs, rainwater harvesting, stormwater pollution prevention. I'd emphasize constantly that the decisions we make now are going to affect the future of Campbell for generations. Expertise is needed to help craft sensible and sustainable growth to preserve Campbell's unique character while balancing this with the viable economic growth for a financially stable city. I have the experience of 40 years working in the public sector, not only being on council for four years and now currently being mayor. I'm a qualified to achieve this goal. I have a fair and equi equitable approach to things. I work in collaboration with developers and the public and our community. Our community is very important input. I wanna keep Campbell the darling of Silicon Valley. My website is Susan, the number four, Campbell.com. Thank you very much, Susan. And now, Terry Hines. So thank you, League of Women Voters. And again, I, I commend the candidates on their desire to serve and give back to the community. I, my daughter asked me a question the other day of uh, what I'm doing for women, uh, what I plan to do for women. I thought I'd share my answer here. I plan to continue to sponsor cancer awareness and the search for cures. Uh, my mother-in-law was a 20 plus year uh, breast cancer survivor. My Mary is a 20 plus year uh, survivor of, of breast cancer. I hope to continue the continued prevention for my daughter, Lindsay, and I dream for it to be out of the conversation for my granddaughter. I want to promote, and secondly, I want to promote confidence building for young women in schools and social media interactions, specifically sponsoring small business programs. I've got a, uh, uh, an understanding of how to start a small business, and I want to be able to uh, promote that through uh, supporting uh, young women in that desire and interest. Finally, I want to work closely with Chief Berg and public safely to eradicate domestic violence. It does not belong in our society. All of these may be of dream and I pledge to pursue, uh, but you cannot make progress without dreaming. Terry Hines, Campbell City Council, District 1. Thank you very much, candidates. I do want to emphasize for our audience again that there are two district elections. We have three candidates running in District 1, Terry Hines, Susan Landry, and Ann Souza. And we have two candidates running in District 2, Carol Hoffman, and Sergio Lopez. Candidates, I wanna thank you again for your participation tonight. We wish you well in your campaign and greatly respect your candidacy for these important offices. Thank you for your participation. Audience members, thank you for your attendance. We hope you have learned a lot tonight that will help you with your decision-making when voting. The League would like to remind you to vote by November 3rd. 
We are so lucky here in California and in Santa Clara County that every registered citizen is able to vote by mail. You will be receiving your mail-in ballot in early October and can vote by completing the ballot and mailing it back in the postage paid envelope that was provided, completing your ballot and dropping it off at any secure vote box throughout the county, or you can visit a vote center to drop off your ballot, to vote in person, to get a replacement ballot if needed, and even to register to vote conditionally on that day. For additional information on the candidates and ballot measures, we'd like to refer you to our website, the League of Women Voters of Southwest Santa Clara Valley, to the county website, the League of Women Voters of Santa Clara County, and for more information on candidates, we urge you and encourage you to visit votersedge.org, which is a publication sponsored by the League of Women Voters and MapLite, uh, which lists all the information about the candidates and the measures. And we'd like to acknowledge that um, uh, Ann Sousa has already completed hers for Campbell, and we urge our other candidates to please submit your information to Voters Edge. And another source of excellent information is ballotpedia.org. So again, thank you very much for attending. Uh, and that concludes our forum. Thank you, moderator. Excellent job. Thank you. Thank you, League thank of you. Women Voters. <laughs> thank you. Well, she has to turn.